We're here at G and G's. Um, it's Wednesday morning. A little chilly this morning compared to what it's been the last few days. Um, ready to get rainy. Yeah. Ready to get rainy. That's coming in Thursday night, Friday morning. But we're not getting the worst part of it. But we pray for our friends and family down in Florida because they're going to get hit again. Especially those Lakelanders. Sitting in the center of the state. Coming or going, they're going to get hit. 44 years with no hurricanes since Hurricane Don. Right. And then four in one year. Wow. 2004, one in, one in 2004, four in 2005, I think that's something like that. Yeah. I experienced two growing up in, in North Miami, yeah. 64, 65, or 65, 66. Those are the only two I've ever experienced. And I lived in Florida till, from 62 to 98. You were in Fort Myers and then in the Lakeland. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they hit around. You know, you know, David David came across, but it didn't. Andrew was south, and not, that's when we were in Central Florida. So somehow I've always avoided them. And now up here, as you will find out, we seem to be blessed from any kind of major storm damage. Um, a rare tornado, very rare. We had that one that hit Hayesville eight years ago. Uh, so we've been graced by that, but. Keep them in your prayers. I've got a Zoom meeting with our circuit visitors today, so I, I will probably hear all the updates and uh, in regards to that. So uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we give you thanks again as we can be in your word and let that word enliven us. Uh, let it, this word prepare us for our time of worship today. And especially as we are in these last uh, Sundays of the church here. Uh, they're always focused in on the end times. Uh, and so um, as we are prepared for that, let us then be your instruments to prepare others. We pray this for the, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it is very fitting that we're talking about hurricanes with these kind of texts. <laughs> um, because it does, it does work into, especially uh, the first one, uh, that we, we're going to start with the gospel today. I'm preaching on the gospel, um, and I'm not preaching on the whole gospel because as we read it, there's a lot of stuff there. That would that would be a two-hour sermon. Um, well, in fact, one of the guys on the video, he's 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 taking this text and preaching the next three Sundays on it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the way to do it. Because again, the, the next three Sundays are, are the end of the church, church year Sundays, which are always focused in on the end times. Um, so, and you will hear that, except in the psalm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was trying to make sense of the psalm. It's sort of like, praise the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Even though it's not one of the Hallel, Hallel Psalms, but that's basically what it is. is everything, everything's praising the Lord. What? Okay. Um, so uh, we start with uh, Luke 21. Um, we aren't going to read the whole assigned text. We're going to read everything except the parenthesis verses. Uh, there's some parenthesis verses here. We're stopping at 28. Um, basically because that's what I'm entertaining for the sermon on Sunday. Uh, because there's just too much there. So uh, I will read it. Uh, and uh, Luke 21, we begin at verse 5 to 28. So um, it's going to be a long reading. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so that means you get the short one. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, Luke 21, beginning at verse 5. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said... As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am he and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. 
And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place. But the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my namesake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance, to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in, in sun and moon and stars and on, on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the seas and the waves. Sounds like a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. That's where the sermon title comes from, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> That's where it comes from. That's the gospel. That's that's the one glimpse of gospel in this whole text. Oh man! And look at how it starts. Yeah. Look at how it starts. It, it, it's we marvel at the wrong things to marvel at. You know, um, I, I was visiting a member uh, with Mel Thrasher back a few years ago uh, and it was a hospital in Chattanooga and on the TV screen was the, the fire at Notre Dame oh so five years ago roughly yeah. mm -hmm. and, and so you know Mel and I got into a discussion and I said you know what if the building and all saints burned down I don't know if I'd build it back up again So, and, I, and I, th I think what Jesus is saying is, be careful what you think the church is. Yeah. Um, how often do we get sidetracked with, oh, look at the, how's it worded? The noble stones and offerings. Um, as for these things that you see, and that really rang out at me in, in preparation you know, we get we get so honed in on the institution. Council just met last night to deal with budget. You got to deal with budget. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with the visible things. But can we get too caught up in it? Uh, so, what what intrigued you with? Well, really, this this ties back to what I was seeing in Malachi and and the song even kind of ties into it is like you said it's where you focus your attention okay you know Malachi talks about the same kind of thing destruction all that and he talks Correct. about them there being joy there too and I'll 
I'll talk about that when we Right, uh, right. And that's why I wanted to put Malachi second. Right. <laughs> because there's very little joy in no. this but text. If, if, if you know the history of the church, there is, because the disciples were looking at Jesus. And that's what he's saying is, this is your opportunity to be a witness. You know? And if you remember, when they were taken and beaten, when they left, they were joyful. Yeah. Because they were kind of worthy to be a witness for, for Christ. Yeah. So that, that's, that's post resurrection. <laughs> yeah, it's post resurrection. But that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Stuff, you know. Well, and and the, and, the, and the interesting question is who's who's who who are the while some were speaking of the temple. I do the text doesn't say the disciples. I, I'm 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 saying is that well looking looking up ahead of that. Yeah. You know, you, you, it, it looks like it's in the context of a conversation and walking with, but you know here. Yeah, my says the disciples were remarking. Yeah. So so it looks like it's within that context because just right before this is the the widow putting her offering, mm -hmm. uh, giving all that she had. It, what a great great contrast. The one giving all she had versus oh look at all that we have. Yeah. Um. And and and. They ask these two questions. When will these things be and what will the sign? It, it's, it's almost like, hey, Jesus, give us a hint so yeah. that we know that it's coming. You know? So you can get rid of it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or, 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 or it's in the, you know, I, 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 but, but how often are people in the church thinking that way today? You know? Because they start looking for the signs. They, they, they look at the hurricanes down in Florida. They look at the political melee that's going on. Oh, oh, yeah, it's the end times. Well, yeah, it's the end times because the end times started, the clock started when Jesus ascended into heaven. So yes, the end times we've been in. Uh, but is it the end time? I can't even count the number of times the world is going to end in my lifetime. You know what? All the predictions, all the books, you know, one, it's going to freeze, it's going to, you know, now we have global warming. There's one guy, I think he wrote two books, The Great Late Planet Earth, and another one that everybody was all gaga about. Hal Lindsey. Yeah, and then yep. they had, uh, then you, we always had the nuclear threat, it's always over our heads. Right. Oh, and then we had Y2K. Yeah. You know, you know everything was going to go fluey with that because we were so tied into computer. That's the ironic thing is Y2K, we, we, the whole world was going to go fluey because we had such a dependence upon computers. We're more dependent upon computers today. I, I remember back in 2000, we had just gotten our first computer, yeah. basically. And, and, and so the internet would... <laughs> Remember AOL? <laughs> Dial up. <laughs> but, but, but I think that really goes into, we, 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 we get so focused on, uh, and, and our, my pastor's group last night, uh, yesterday morning, talked about this. We get so comfortable that when one little thing happens, oh, that's persecution. Go to China. Yeah. Go to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That's that's and, and and Jesus says, you know, don't worry about how long it's going to be because the sign it, it, it will be. And and I love you know there's some some sort of promise in that is when you hear these when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at at once. It's not going to just all be like boom. It's it's going to happen. There's going to be events and events and events and events. Uh, the closer we get, probably the events are coming yeah. closer together. Um, but realizing and 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 that's where I saw the next section. Two parts. Uh, there's going to be things that you're going to see: nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes, famines, pestilences, terrors, great signs from heaven. You're going to see things that may bother you but they may not they may not even touch your life we're going to get some smattering of rain from the hurricanes but we're not going to be affected by it we're going to see these signs 
But then the next section is, but there will be things that will touch your life. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you, persecute you, deliver you up, uh, brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. But look at the promise. It's an opportunity to witness. It's an opportunity to witness. It's an opportunity to tell people. Uh, and, and by the way, don't even prepare your words because I'll give them to you. Yeah, Jack, I know, I know you're... <laughs> well, I was You're just, chomping. I was just thinking, if I was going to preach on this text, I wouldn't get any further than verse 6. <clears throat> verse the 6. The ESV doesn't really do it justice. <clears throat> and these things which ye behold, the days will come in which there shall be not left one stone upon another that, that shall not be thrown down. You know, the ESV says, you know, what you see. But if you go back, it's what you behold. Mm -hmm. It's what you not only see with your eyes, but what you behold, what you hold dear. Right. Well, and, and that's what I'm preaching. Yeah, because what you hold dear is, 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 is it's gone. It's going to be destroyed. And, 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 and we focus so much in our lives. I mean, you know. Well, be careful. I'm, I'm leading you uh, on Sunday. I'm leading you to what you should hold dear. <laughs> so, 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 so everything you hold dear is not going to be destroyed if you are holding dear to the right, the thing. right thing. Exactly, the right thing, one thing. Yeah, they're looking at the temple and they're looking at the, right. at the adornment. They're, they're in Jerusalem. They're where they want to be. They're right in the center of right. all of it. And 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 too and too many people want to focus this focus in on this that this was a one-time event it happened in 70 a.d the temple was destroyed and that was it that wasn't the first time but well it but that's that's what this is prophesying this is prophesying right. the destruction of the temple in 70 a.d and some people go okay yeah that was done and it's like no and and this is the temple talk is who's the temple that's Jesus. yeah yeah you know, and that's yeah and what do we do to them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and 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 so um, so so you know that section answers the uh, when will these things uh, what when, when will these things be? So he's answering that question, and then he answers you know in the in the next part you know what will the signs be? Um, and, and and so yeah, it's it's. And, and, and where I'm going is what we've been saying on Monday Bible study. What's the, what's the one key thing about Jesus that we need to remember? What, what, is the, what is the thing by which we hold our head high? To conquer death. Right. Jesus crucified and resurrected. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where I'm going to go is we hold our high head high because of the crucifixion, because of death and resurrection. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, and that's where we get 27. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Well, it wasn't quite a cloud, but they did see him in great in power and great. Well, actually, it was a cloud. Yeah, he was taken up. Well, but I'm, I'm talking about when he died because there was great darkness. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I, I love the way um, Mel Gibson portrays it in in the Passion of the Christ, where you have the you have the dark cloud, and you get the singular raindrop. Yeah. Which is the tear of the Father at His death. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's that's our hope. That's our promise. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack, you're right. Um, what do you I might have to include that word in there somewhere I don't I, I wrote it yesterday so I don't I'll have to see if it can fit somewhere I just get frustrated sometimes I mean I love the ESV don't get me wrong but they tongue down the word sometimes where the difference of seeing and beholding you know I mean in our understanding what we see is what we see yeah. but what we behold is 
But sometimes the King James gets it oh, yeah. all messed up too. Oh, I know. <laughs> right, and that's the that's the problem with the English language. Yeah. That's why we need so much. Why 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 do you think they have us at the seminary learn the original languages? Yeah. Right, right. So that we can, you know, my my Greek prof said. Um, your people can either hear the word as if it was in the 1930s and they're listening to it on radio or you can bring them even more current you can take them into the 1960s where it's on black and white or even more current you can take them where it's high def or you can take them to the game and if you've if you've ever experienced any kind of event, whether you know it, it, you can listen to it on the radio, you can watch it on TV, or if you're at the event life, there's something different about being there when it's live, because it's a total immersion in it. Um, so when we read this text, I don't know if I don't know if I can take anybody to this game. <laughs> Because I, 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 in our country, we really don't understand this. But the people who are persecuting, you know, when they hear the Son of Man is going to come in a cloud with power and great glory, and when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads. You don't have to mourn. You don't have to sulk. Raise your heads. Be confident. Be confident. Because the one who died and rose for you is coming again um, and that's where we have our confidence anything else no that gives you a glimpse of my sermon hold your head high hold your head high 1972 I think uh, I'll have to, somebody will have to google that by Argent I did remember that oh, okay. yeah. I did remember it was Argent but I didn't I didn't look at what the date was we're moving to Malachi Malachi 4 one through, six. one through six. No, as Jack said, Malachi four. <laughs> Why are we even saying one through six? It's Malachi four. Um, so uh, the last chapter in the Old Testament. Go ahead, Forrest. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant, every evil doer will be stubble, and that day. Will that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord God Almighty. Not a root or branch will be left of them, but for you who reveal my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Then you will trample down the wicked, they will be as ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all of Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elisha before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. Okay. So you, again, you wanted to start with Malachi, so... so so well, I like me. It really went, goes into the psalm real well because... Yeah, you have all this death and destruction, and nobody can look at this and then consider the law of Moses and go, oh, those, that's those people, and I, I don't have a part in that. We're all facing God's wrath. Mm -hmm. But you have those that look to me will have joy. So again, it's as though, you know, we put our faith in Jesus, we look to Jesus, so we're, we're being saved. And I like that image of a, of a calf, mm -hmm. a stall. Mm -hmm. I don't, when I like to watch these these zoo, like the Bronx Zoo, and you see so many times when you know they put them away for winter, but then when it's spring, they let them back out into the exhibits. And you do you see all these little animals? As soon as they as soon as they go out that door, they're oh, they're so happy. They're just, and so that's the image I get is. is Again, so, it's it's be, you know, so are you advertising goat yoga? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I don't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, and, and, and what a contrast from the last one where, where basically I said it had so much doom and gloom and you had one verse at the end. This one is doom and gloom and one verse at the beginning and all the rest of this well, is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 but that one verse, man, man, does Malachi pack it into that one verse. Yeah. Uh, uh, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. Do you know what stubble is? What's left over from the heat or when you harvest. Yeah, it's the leftover after the har so it's been harvested. Yeah. So the good stuff has been taken. Yeah. And 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 the, and the stubble is just the the junk. Mm -hmm. Um and, and typically yes, they burn it. Um so I thought that was a neat imagery there that yes. you know the the harvest has happened and now the stubble is left over and they will be set ablaze uh and then the, the, this to me impacts it. it it's not only okay the harvest has happened the stubble is left they're set ablaze but then nothing it will leave them neither root nor branch nothing will be left right you know people have to hear this message yeah you know it's really go ahead it's also very poignant because all the time god was visiting israel for their sins I will always save a remnant. Mm -hmm. I've always mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. a root or a stem. I'm, you know, right. he, he always talked about, yeah, I'm willing to have you have carried away, but I'm always going to save myself a remnant. Now he's saying, I ain't going to be nothing like that. Right, because the remnant, remnant's been taken. Yeah. The remnant's been taken. So so finally there comes, and, 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 and this is the harsh reality. You know, how, how many people are out there all paths lead to heaven. If God's a loving God, He's gonna He's gonna take everybody. You know, because that's who God is. He loves everybody. So He's gonna take No, He's not. There is going to be stubble and it's going to be burned and there will be nothing left. And oh yeah, by the way, it will be trampled under the soles of your feet. You know. Utter, utter destruction. Exactly. Well and, and <laughs> And that under the soles of your feet comes after the the calves leaping. So I mean, I'm saying the calves leaping on top of the ash and just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it says and they tread down the wicked, but 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 I, I you know uh, again it's that contrast be between yes, if you are not believing, this is what's going to happen. But if you are believing, this is what's going to happen. It will be great joy. You know, I love saying woo hoo. And, and that to me is that image of the calf leaping, coming out of the stall. Is, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they will be in the utter presence of Jesus himself. How, how much better, it can't be any better than that. But Malachi leads to that time ain't yet. Yeah. Because that's where verse 4 picks up is that time ain't yet. So now remember the law, in other words, it's a call to obedience. Mm -hmm. and, and and he talks about Moses. Oh, by the way. And, and then the next one is he talks about Elijah, the prophet, which is a call to repentance. So you, you got the call to obedience. And we know we mess up, so we have the call to repentance in order to get back straight. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, where, where else did Moses and Elijah appear? Yeah. Um, Coincidence? I don't think it's amazing how scripture just folds together in that. Go ahead, Jack. I I like the way the translation the forest read in, in verse five, you know, in ESV. I'm picking on the translations again. ESV says great and awesome. And we go back to the Greek if it's uh, No, it's not Greek, it's Hebrew here. I'm sorry, Hebrew. It's great and dreadful. Okay. Dreadful day. Okay. And because it is an awesome day right. for us. Right. But in reality, it can also be a dreadful day for Correct. us. Correct. Because we're going to see, you know, it'll be great for us, but not for the ones that we love or care about or try to reach. And they just were unreachable. Well, and, and, and to play off, it, it, it is a good contrast because yes you you get the contrast of the believer seeing it as great and then the unbeliever seeing it as dreadful 
But I think we, and, and maybe this is why Jesus preaches what he does in Luke 21 and why we get this in Malachi here is we as believers need to see our time now as the dreadful day. We need to see now as the dreadful day because we need to have our hearts burning for the salvation of those who aren't saved yet. Because we don't know if they're going to be here tomorrow. Right. Or this afternoon. And, and, right, and, 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 and that may be where verse 6 goes. I don't know, you know, I didn't do a deep dive into this, but I saw, I saw the repentant word there, turn. turn. You know, he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. But it might be in that same sense, Jack, is our hearts are turning toward them in order to proclaim to them this word so that it's not a dreadful day for them. For them. So my heart is being turned to my children so that I, I can speak the I can speak because again this goes back to Deuteronomy where it says you know teach your children while while you're at home while you're on the road while you're sleep, when you're when you're in the bed or when you're waking up you you teach the children these things so that they know that's the whole Moses connection there uh, but that returning to turning your hearts to them is a sense of repentance uh, you know, maybe for the wrong that we've done then, but also the wrong that we've done to God by not bringing them up in the faith. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, it, I mean, it, we, have, we have two things to hold on to where our children are concerned their baptism and raising a child the way he should go, and when he's old, he's not, he won't turn to father. We've got God's promise of baptism and his word right. that, that says, hey, if we've done what God told us to do, we can rely on that. And, and, and in this one, we've got the curse of if we don't, mm -hmm. lest I come and strike the land with a decree, decree of utter destruction. There you go. So yes, we've got the promises, but we also have the curse. Mm -hmm. and, and how many in contemporary Christian theology today only focus in on the promise that just be good, live a good life, and you'll be okay. He's a good person. He's going to heaven. He gave you the board. Yeah. Right. Look at our beautiful temple. <laughs> Anything else? No, I think that's... Okay. We go to 2 Thessalonians 3. And this is the one that you said, I didn't see a connection here. Uh, maybe the first part, but the, the whole part about people being idle. Oh... I've already spoken to it. Oh, have you? Good. I've already spoken to it. That, that, that's where I'm threading some of these things together. Uh, there are parentheses verses here. I'm going to read the parentheses verses. 1 through 5 is the parentheses verses, and then it's 6 through 13. So we're reading the whole thing because I think the whole thing is important to fit um, in, in the way we're tracking the text today. So uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 13. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men for not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. 
As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is, I, I have preached this text before, and I'm, there I go. I was, I was tied up in the cord. Um, <laughs> We got to be we got to be careful that we don't preach works righteousness here, and I, I think that's probably why you struggled with the idleness yeah. thing. Um, but but let's uh, again let's entertain the first part one through five. Um, uh, again, I think one through five goes back to it goes back to what Jack said. What are you beholden? What are you beholden? You know, and and and, and I think what Paul is saying here is. Here's what you you need to behold, the word of the Lord. But pray for us. Pray for us because we've got the word of the Lord. You got the word of the Lord, and this is the connection into the other ones. Yeah. There are people out there that don't have the word of the Lord. That are going to suffer the curse. Uh, that will that will be the stubble that will be set ablaze. And and so that's why he's saying, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may may speed ahead, be honored, uh, bring about deliverance, uh, direct your hearts. You know all all those things that are in that first one. Uh, they, they give you confidence in the Lord, so that when things happen, we're able to stand. Right. So, I, so you got you got the first part right. I got the first part. So I see it, that that connection to what I was seeing in the other ones. The idleness, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's not right, but I don't see how it ties into what we've been talking about. Well, it goes back to the, the middle phrase here, for not all have faith. Okay. So if we who have the word, who have been blessed by the word, who have been implanted with the word, if we remain idle, Okay. What happens? Word doesn't spread, and that's that's what I saw at the why he's saying pray for us that yeah. the word of Mac, the word of God the word of the Lord may speed ahead. How's the word of the Lord going to speed ahead? Yeah, unless we're out there. So so if we're sit, if we're sitting in our comfortable comfortably in our pew. Hearing the word of the Lord, receiving the gift of the Lord, enjoying the promises that we have. You know, it goes back to um, what was the was it in the the dr being filled with dread. You know, the 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 the, 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 the great and dreadful day. Right. And that's why that's why I made that connection is. If we are not being feel, filled with dread for the other, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord's not going to speed ahead. Right. So, you know, this brought out, when I was reading this verse, it, it, it goes back to the word we used on Monday's Bible study abiding. Right. All right. Not standing, not walking, mm -hmm. not sitting and with, with the wrong, but, but actually. Getting up and doing what we need to be doing, not being idle. Right. Because if we're walking or standing, standing or walking or sitting with the unrighteous, then we're not we're not abiding with them. We're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and sharing that word. And 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 Paul in this in in this example, he's saying what his temple could be. His temple could be well. You you know what? I'm owed this. Well, yeah. I'm owed this because of who I am, because of my position, because of my authority. I'm owed this. But he's saying, that's not, I, I'm not going to sit idly by. I'm going to continue to do. What, whether you give me that bread or not is not the difference. Even though I can, I, I, I can stand firm on that, it's, that's not the difference. The difference for me is that this word of God gets into the ears of people. Um, so does that help you see that uh, idleness? idleness? Yeah, yeah it, I, absolutely, yeah. Um, like what you're talking about, the abide. Mm -hmm. I like that, and it kind of ties in with what him talked about, having confidence. You know, if you're, if you're in the Lord and you're going out into the world, 
you're taking the Lord's abiding with you. He's going along with you. Absolutely. It's like you have a travel companion that you're taking with you. And that way, if, you, if you're doing that, everything you say, think, and do is going to be a reflection of Christ to people around you. And that's how you spread the word. Just, you know, you, you're that sense. I like that abiding and that sense of the They may not want to hear what we have to say, but they can see our actions. Right. Right. Well, and it goes back to the the gospel text, and and I don't play with it too much, but it does come into into the I think it's the gospel text where it says, um, "I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict." They might, and then, you know, and yeah, you will be hated by all. Now, now granted, they're going to try to withstand it. They're going to try to contradict it. They're going to try to doubt it. But in reality, they can't. They're going to reject it. Co the fact is, that it's the truth. Correct. So, so their attempts to do those things are fruitless. Yeah. Uh, in, in doing that. And, and, and I, I know the last time I, I preached this, I was fascinated by that term busybody. You know, for, for, for we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. <laughs> I like that. Now, now, yeah, but fit it in the context of what, I, what I've been saying now is what does a busybody typically, you know, think about a busybody. What does a busybody typically do? Well, they, yeah, they do something. <laughs> yeah, but how do they how do they get into people's business? Gossip. They, they do it with the mouths. Gossip, telling falsehoods, um, spreading untruths. This sounds like our political climate. <laughs> uh, uh, golly, tell you. I'm tired of them, and we get a whole nother month of them. But, but, but look at the contrast. They use their mouths to gossip, spread lies, untruths. Paul saying, what should you be using your mouth for? Let the word of the Lord speed forth. You know, that's your busyness. That's your busyness, is that, and it's also your business, if you want to put it in that, do it with a wire and eye, it, it's same, going to happen the same thing. But that, don't be busy bodies. Don't use your words to distract and disrupt and create doubt. Use your words so the, that the word of the Lord will speed forth. If they choose to doubt, with, you know, withstand it, you know, all that, that's on them. Uh, but let our hearts be troubled today. Not for our, not for our salvation, but for the salvation of others. Yeah, they, they may reject what you say. They can't reject how you live and what you do, and they can't reject your prayers for them. Oh, they can reject it, but the thing is, they they well, uh, can't contradict it because they can contradict your word and argue with you all day long if you're trying to talk. Yeah, some about the truth though. Yeah, even even they know. I mean. These political parties, those people know they're lying through their teeth. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about the truth that. that well, and, 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 the, and that's the problem is, is we take a truth, you know, and we spin it. Mm -hmm. so, so that there's enough truth there to create doubt. You know, you know that's how they brainwash people, like in Korea and stuff. Mm -hmm. They take and they destroy. Especially if somebody's weak in faith, yeah. they destroy everything they base their life on. And when they're they're just desperate, they'll feed them just a grain of truth, and then tie all this other garbage to it. Sounds like Satan. Yeah, exactly like Satan. Right, and that's why these texts keep point keep pointing to what is the one thing that you hold on to: Jesus crucified and resurrected. Mm -hmm. Go to the resurrection. Hold your head up high because of the resurrection. Because no matter what happens to you, you've got that promise. Yeah. Anything else? We go to the psalm. 
Now, for me, this was the one that doesn't fit in because all the other ones have doom and gloom in it, and you know, and, and point us to Jesus and all. This, this one just points us to Jesus. Well, um, when, I, when I read the song, I was, it's after Malachi, and it's the dancing calf. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. <laughs> it's the calf dancing out of the stall. Exactly. Uh, so that's why you wanted to put it after Malachi. Yeah, because I just said it. Got it. So you, I got you it. Know, you get to do this. Yep. Well, and and and, and uh, again, this is what the non-stubble people <laughs> get to do. So, so if you'd if you'd prefer not to be stubble, folks, be be part of a harvest. And oh yeah, by the way, help others to be part of the harvest because this is what happens when you're part of the harvest. Psalm ninety-eight and. We'll do the first nine verses, okay. right, Jack? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead for it. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made salvation his own, has salvation known, and revealed his righteousness to nations. He has remembered his love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. And verse 9 is where it connects with all the other ones. Yeah. That God will judge. He's going to judge. He's going to judge. So, so why, should the, why should the calf be dancing and leaping and coming out of the stall? He's not going to be part of the destruction. He's not going to be the stubble. Is he going to be judged? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. He will judge the earth. Mm-hmm. Um. And, 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 and I like that. He will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear somebody respond to that one. Exactly. Exactly. He's not going to show any favor. There is no favor. It's either black or it's white. Yeah. yeah. Right or wrong? Right. Right. Yeah, and, I, had a, I had a conversation yesterday. Somebody was trying to say, I was saying, you know, God's black and white. Either you're with God or you're not with God. And they, the person oh, I was arguing know. with, they want, oh, yeah. no, no, they, 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 that, that shade of gray stuff. I was not sure that God's not white. I, I told a story way back. It was one of my first years of preaching. It was, you know, there were two fields and a, a fence separating them. And, mm-hmm. And, and people gathered on one side or gathered on the other side. Well, well, Jesus came and gathered the people that were on his side of the fence. Satan came and gathered his, his people that were on the side of the fence. But there was one guy, one guy who thought he was smart. He sat on the fence. Satan came back and said, come with me. He goes, why? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence. I'm not on one side or the other. Satan goes, the fence is mine. (laughs) (laughs) So, so John, it really goes back to what you're saying. There there is no middle ground. Either you are or you aren't. And and so how does that theology fit that, you know, all, whatever path you take, if you're on a path of of goodness... There are many ways to God or to over. You know, that's just... just, No. Right, right. And people want to hear that. Oh, people love hearing that. They love to hear it because it gives them peace. They don't have to commit to something. Right. Form of self-justification. They, they, you know. Well, and, and that's where our discussion with the pastors came yesterday is, um, so where is the church going wrong? And, and the one thing I said is we preach to culture, good and bad. You know, you, 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 get the, you get the churches that want to preach against culture. You know, to harangue the political process, to harangue uh, same-sex marriage, to harangue 
uh, you know, trans transgenderism. Uh, there are those who are preaching to the culture. Now, now, are those sins? Yes, but are they any different than the sin of gossip, mm -hmm. cheating on your taxes? Mm -hmm. Right. But, but could be. Um, and, and the one thing I told them, I said, you know, we are preaching to the culture. And, and, and that's what a lot of these churches do. Because that, That's a question I'm going to entertain with them. What's the difference between preaching and teaching? And there is a difference. Um, I, I think too often in a teaching style, we preach to the culture. And if you go back to what I've been saying repeatedly throughout today, and which will come up in the sermon on Sunday, there's only one thing to preach. Jesus Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think people want us to preach to the culture. Either, either, either to say what you're saying, Jack. You're okay. You're okay whoever you are just as long as you live a good life. As, as long as you're not beating on people and, and murdering or, you know, as long as, as long, you know, whatever lifestyle you have, that's okay as long, as long as you are being kind to people. Well, it even goes beyond that. It's, it's not, it's okay whatever lifestyle you have as long as it doesn't offend me. <laughs> right? I mean, you're on my toes and you're okay. And you're, yeah. Right. There's, that's, that's the culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... But even if it does offend somebody else, it's still not the matter. That's preaching to culture. Yeah. Because that's the flip side is you preach to the ones so that you you don't offend them. Then then some, yeah, pre preach that because I want to offend them. But who aren't you preaching? And, and, and that's that's looking at the temple. You know, that that's whatever your temple is. That's looking at the, oh, or... Okay, Lisa, give me one. <laughs> what are your shoes? What are your shoes? It distracts you from what truly is the thing we need to preach. And that's why the calf leaps out of the stall. Because it's not about being in heaven with your loved one or if your pet crosses the rainbow bridge. I'm glad I didn't hear that from it. Well, I did hear it from a couple people. <laughs> um heaven is about being with Jesus and that's why the calf leaps and, and, and again we sing to the Lord why because he has made has made known his salvation he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of nations who did he reveal his righteousness in Jesus years ago after one Sunday, he goes, well, I sure wish Pastor would preach more against communism. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> right. We, and, and I've had that throughout my years. People want to want you to rail preach, on, ra rail on certain things that... That's their favorite. Right. It's, it's their fav favorite whipping post. Uh -huh. um, but again, that's preaching culture. We're supposed to preach Jesus. If we now, now, do we include? Because I do. I include the culture in our preaching because that's usually on the sin side is where we get sucked into culture. Um, Jack, are you worried about the results of the election? No. There you go. Frustrated with it. Oh, sure, sure. I, I, I can go with it. Exactly, exactly. But, 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 but as we've seen here, and that's why we end with the psalm. Is as we see here, what's the, what's the final result? Right. We're going to sing for joy because he has done marvelous things. He's done marvelous things, and oh yeah, I can't wait for the most marvelous thing. <laughs> when we get to heaven yeah anything else I had a thought and I lost it <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that just as a Catholic you know saying, I think having Christ in your heart and being centered in Christ there's joy that can't be touched I think that's why the disciples were able to even though they were being beaten they still had that joy is there's there's a there's 
when you're walking with Christ, it can't be taken away from you. Right. And so there's a, I think there's a, a, I view it as a quiet, silent joy that's right. always in your heart. I know the older I get, the less, wor- I still have worries, but the less worries I have. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that worried me w- when I was younger don't worry me anymore. Yeah. Um, that's because, again, when you get focused in the Lord, you know, Jack, you're having your surgery coming up. That's concerning. But I would presume that when you get to the, right now, but especially when you get closer to that day, you'll be like, I'm just going to be gone. That's true. Surgery <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and, 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 and yeah, the, the pain won't be gone right away. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it will, be, and it will be Kelly's pain. <laughs> what did Ray say about his back pain? What? What did Ray say about his back pain? The sharpness is gone, right? But there's an ache still there. Right. It's kind of like, hey, maybe, maybe that fits in with what we're talking about. We need to have an ache that's still there. That the, 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 the sharp pain is gone. The effect of sin. Uh, the devastating effect of sin is gone because Jesus has claimed victory over that which is ours now through baptism but there still should be a dull ache but the dull ache is for the other yeah it's the worries and the concern about giving those others giving them the message and and not being frustrated when they don't take the message because that's in God's hands, not right, our hands. Right. So you hold your head high because when people see that, they're going to go, with everything that's going on, yeah. why are you holding your head high? Why are you weeping like a calf out of a stall? <laughs> 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 hey, folks. Jack is going to do some chancel dancing on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Luann is listening right now because I know she's laughing like crazy. <laughs> oh, anything else, Jack? Anybody else? Anything? Let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, again we give you thanks. Uh, again, yes, these these end time passages we're going to hear this week and the the, the the next two weeks and. And yes, they can be depressing. They can be oppressive uh, because we live in that world. It's so easy to realize it, but we don't realize the fullness of it because it's going to get worse. Uh, Jesus promises that, you know, we're seeing some of these things, but they are going to get worse. But lift our heads up. Let us keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ, crucified and resurrected. That is our hope. That is our promise. That is what we cling on to. And in doing that, let us also pray for uh, the word of the Lord to speed forth from us so that we have that ache in our heart for the salvation of others. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we go to serve the Lord. Amen.